And we're live. Hello and welcome to another Vardin webinar. Today we'll be talking about SSO, observability, and our new products that help you integrate these for your Vardin applications. My name is Mikael Sukoinen. I'm the product marketing manager here at Vardin. And I'm joined today by my colleague Matthew Wilson, who's a senior software developer here at Vardin. I usually talk about the things that we do, and Matthew actually does the things that I talk about. So first of all, a few housekeeping rules. So all lines are muted during the webinar. What this means is there's no open chat. However, if you navigate to the questions tab at the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you can ask questions. Uh, and don't worry if we don't reply to them immediately because we have respond, uh, reserved some time at the end to answer those questions. And also we'll record this webinar and we'll send the recording to anyone who signed up. So I can see quite a few of you made it, but if you didn't, don't worry, we'll send this recording. If you're one of the people watching this recording, welcome. Uh, today we'll be talking about SSO, so single sign-on, and also observability. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating the new VON acceleration kit products that help you implement these for your VON application. And at the end, as promised, we'll have a questions and answers session. So I'll, I'll like to start off by doing a few polls. So you can see those polls in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen next to the questions tab. So if you go in there and you click the polls, those should pop up and you can submit a vote. So the first question reads, how are you monitoring your applications in production today? The options are not at all with basic system metrics, which would be CPU and memory usage with the full observability solution or something else. And you can just click one of those and submit your vote. And it seems like the overwhelming majority uh, clicked basic system metrics. So the majority of you seem to be looking at CPU and, and memory usage. Also, I can see some of you have a full observability solution and an equal amount has none at all. And then the second question would be, how do you handle authentication for your application? The options are local credentials, SSO, neither, or something else. And again, I can see half of you exactly have local credentials as the authentication mechanism. And about 30% of you actually have SSO implemented with the rest of you having neither. So we can move on to what SSO is and what the SSO kit is. So the SSO kit is pre-made integration with some SSO providers. And at the moment we support um, Okta, Azure Active Directory and Keycloak. So SSO or single sign-on uh, enables your users to sign in with a single ID across all your applications and then stay authenticated throughout their workday. And at the end of the day, they can log out with a single click. Uh, some benefits of SSO is that there's no need to store those credentials locally. Also, your users don't have to remember multiple credentials. As I mentioned, they stay logged in across all the applications and once they're done working, they can log out um, by just one click. Uh, second would be observability. So these are pre-made integrations with some observability providers. Um, at the moment, we support New Relic, uh, Grafana, Datadog, Prometheus, and Jaeger. And observability is the act of answering any question about your application infrastructure, no matter how complex it is. So in contrast to traditional application monitoring, where you might be looking at your CPU metrics, uh, let's play a scenario where the CPU usage spikes up to 100%. Um, and then you restart your application and it works normally again. So you'll know that happened, but why did it happen? And why, how can you fix that? Uh, is the difference between observability and standard application performance monitoring. Now, observability usually consists of application metrics. So these tell you how much your CPU usage is and your memory um, alerts. So when something goes wrong, you'll want to know about it. Then logs. So a detailed record of what's happening and where. Logs are also very useful if you're testing a new, um, let's say a new feature and you're not sure about how it's going to go, having the logs open at the same time is very useful. And observability aims to make logs actionable and easy to manage because it can often be quite overloading with information. 
And finally, the traces, um, arguably the most important, to see where the, the error happened. And so that you can trace the error to the root cause and then fix that. And I'll hand it over to Matthew now next. And he's built an application that has implemented both the SSO kit and the observability kit. So you can see them in action. I'll stop storing my screen and it's over to you, Matthew. Thank you very much, Mikael. You're welcome. Yes, I'll just share my screen. And I'll drink some coffee. Excellent. Um, so I've uh, created a, a small application um, which has got SSO kit enabled and that's set up to work with a key cloak um, in, institution. Um, and here in the key cloak, I've just got a Vardin realm, which I've set up with one user, which I now have to log into apparently again. Okay, one user, as you can see there. And then in the application, this is the beginning of the application. This page has anonymous access, so there's no login at this point. Uh, but when we try to enter one of the other pages, we get redirected to the, this is the key cloak um, login. So I'll log in with the key cloak user. And that's redirected back to the application. Um, one of the advantages of using um, SSO is that you can get user information. And here we've grabbed the user first name, last name. Uh, so that has come from the key cloak uh, connection. And also we've implemented a logout button, which when you log out here, this actually will log out from the key cloak session. So any other applications that you may be using will be logged out as well. Also implemented in this is that there's a back channel logout that you can do from the key cloak administration console. Uh, so this is if a an administrator wants to log out a user from here. Here's the session and we'll sign out. So no sessions there anymore. And back in the application, we'll just go to another page and we're kicked out again, back to the main screen. So that's just a little taste of what the SSO kit gives. And now I'll move on to observability. So this application has actually been set up with uh, the observability kit as well, linking to a Grafana dashboard, which I have set up locally. Let's just take a look at the dashboard and you can see that metrics have been uh, recorded as we've been working, as have the traces that Mikhail talked about and the logs are coming in here as well. So they're all going into this one location. And let's just have a look inside one of these spans, uh, one of these traces, and you can see there's a hierarchy of spans showing uh, a request and the handlers of that request. Now let's say there are some issues with this application, which we might have put in on purpose. And users, for example, have said that in the address form, sometimes it saves, sometimes it doesn't. Sounds a bit strange. Let's try it. Okay, so we have a notification here saying that this sample address was stored. Seems okay. Oh, and now we don't have that notification. Okay, so let's have a look in the dashboard. Refresh this data. Right, uh, here we have the error traces and you can see that the address form has popped up in there. So let's have a look at one of these. Several of the spans have error symbols next to them. And this is a sign of a, an error that has been caught and then re-thrown up the chain. Uh, we look at the bottom of this chain in the events, we can see ah, it's not in there. There should be a, a stack trace in there. So let's go back and try the other trace. 
there was actually a second one in there. It feels odd when a demo application doesn't have an error, and then that's <laughs> the error. It had, it had an error, yes, <laughs> but no stack trace. OK, so there was actually two coming from there. Ah, there we go. Just need to drill down a little bit further. And then we can look at this stack trace. And OK, there's some sort of message here. Size must be between 5 and 5. And the property path is postal code. Right, so basically what's happening here is that um, on the database, there's some sort of constraint saying that the postal code has to be exactly five characters long. And there's not been any implementation of a validation on the form. So that's something that we need to tell the developers. We need some validation on this form, make sure that the uh, there's no queries being sent to the database before this being validated. Um, another issue that users have uh, flagged up is that the master detail page is taking a little while to load in. OK, yeah, that's taking a fair while, actually. So what could be going on there? So it may take a little time for it to come into Grafana. But actually, there's a very long span, uh, 2 thirds of a second. OK, so in here, there looks like there's to be uh, a number of spans going all the way down. And that seems to be taking the time. So what are these spans? We'll look at the top one here. Right. So in here, we have some sort of um, request, or sorry, uh, SQL query. And then in here, we also have subsequent queries. So this looks like it's a an initial query and then some subsequent queries for each row. So this would indicate that maybe you need to re uh, redo the main query so that it takes in gets more information, uh, more data from different tables, perhaps to stop this n plus one problem. And uh, that is all I have for the demo. So, Mikhail. Uh, back over to you. Lovely. Thanks, Matthew. And as you can see, in sort of recapping, it's it's a lot easier to find those and trace those errors when you can both the sort of poor performance and then the actual unexpected error event, you can find them from in the same place in the same dashboard, thanks to Grafana. It's easy to demo as well when you don't have to jump between, between views. And I'll just take over my presentation for, for a second here. There we go. So a sort of next steps, uh, you can request a trial for both of these kits. Uh, and we have more acceleration kits as well. And you can find all of these on one.com slash acceleration or in the platform menu on the front page if you go there. And also we have documentation. So if you want more technical details and if you want to see how Matthew has implemented this for the demo application, or if you already have a one and ultimate subscription and you want to get started, uh, you can go to one.com dash documentation. And then there's tools tab uh, where you can find both the SSO kit and the observability kit. And now, as I promised, we have some time for your questions, uh, if you have any. So again, at the bottom right hand corner of the of your screen, you'll see a questions tab and you can just post them in there. We have the first question from Louise asking, how are we today? Well, thank you, Louise. We're, we're fine. Welcome to the webinar. And also, yes, thank you, Louise. Doing well. Lovely. Uh, we have a question from Michael. Uh, hi, is the source code of the demo available? Matthew? Um, I don't believe the source code of my application is available at, at this point. Um, it is using a very um, basic um, instructions that we have on the documentation that Mikhail talked about. It doesn't take too much to actually get these things set up. All right, so then that's a good sort of follow up question we have from Lucas. Um, uh, one can also integrate a one application with Keycloak as is. So how exactly does the kit help? Right. That's a very good question. So um, basically, the SSO kit is using um, 
Open ID Connect. Uh, so it can actually talk to many different providers, um, but also the it's the um, it's basically the ease of use. So for somebody who may have not implemented it already, SSO Kit is there for you that, uh, with that. And another thing is as well, if you build your custom integration and then you update your Vardin version, um, that may break and you may have to rebuild it again, whereas the SSO Kit is a part of the platform, so it updates uh, with the platform every time you update Vardin version, so you don't have to uh, rebuild it on your own. Essentially, we, we maintain it as well. Um, we have a question from Ron asking, do you have any plans to make SSO compatible with WASO2 Ascardeo? Matthew, are you familiar with? I'm not familiar with whether we have plans for that, I'm afraid, yeah. Uh, I think it's safe to say we don't have plans at the moment in that case. Uh, we have a question from, question from John asking, does SSO work with Vardin 14? Uh, both the kits at the moment work with Vardin 23 and above. Uh, and also another question from John would be, what subscription do you need to get the SSO acceleration kit? Um, so the kit is something you can add to your Prime subscription, or then it's included in Ultimate. Um, as well, a Pro subscription is not sufficient. You would have to upgrade into, into Prime. And then we have another question from Lucas saying, thanks, you're welcome. Another question, uh, do kits only work with the specified services or can it be extended for additional services like this, like different SSO providers? It should work with any provider that uh, supports OpenID Connect. Exactly. Uh, beyond beyond that, I, I don't know. Exactly. So the three we listed are the ones that we have the documentation for, and it's also the three that we ha have tested it for, so that we can promise that it works, but you're free to uh, free to extend it. Um, we've got a question. Does this SSO kit work with AWS Cognito? So that would be the same, same answer probably. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Marcus asking, what are the benefits of SSO Kit or a plain spring security with OAuth 2 client? Marcus, I think we'll we'll come back to you with that with that question. Uh, we have a question from Manfred again about, about pricing. So pricing page says additional charge if I want to add it. Uh, what cost may I expect? Uh, so the thing about Prime, there's like a bulk discount. So the more developer licenses you buy and the more features you add on top of it, um, the cheaper it gets. So we always calculate those based on how many seats and what kind of features you want. Uh, so you can, you can just ask for a quote and we'll be happy to give that for you. So it's always uh, per subscription, the pricing. Marcus, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Marcus is asking, can the SSO kit be used in a Java EE application or is it restricted to Spring Boot? I think at the moment it's restricted to Spring Boot. Right, so at the moment, Spring Boot, Spring Boot only. Um, we have a question from Evangelos asking, uh, could we show a part of the code? I'd like to see an um, example to how to connect it with Grafana. And uh, all of those should be in the technical documentation. Am I right, Matthew? Uh, that's right. Um, in, in this case, um, all I've needed to do for the observability kit to connect it is one, uh, run it with a Java agent, which is the observability kit agent. And then two, have a, a properties file um, which I've called agent.properties. Um, and that has the, um, the, the destinations of where your metrics, traces, and logs go to. Um, in this case, I have all of those um, set up locally. And so all I just had to say was um, that they went through OTLP, which is the, the protocol that OpenTelemetry uses, which we've built the observability kit on top of. Um, so it's actually quite simple to set up. Um, if, if you've got something that can use 
open telemetry. And we have another question. So about the observability kit, um, can we give any recommendations on which provider to use? Are there free options or are they are commercial? There are some, um, yeah, there's some free versions, that you, um, free options that you can use um, for production. Um, some uh, providers have uh, cloud ready uh, deployments or you can actually um, you can rent from them as it were um, on their cloud i i know that uh, grafana for example does have a um, a cloud solution that you can set up yourself your own um, kubernetes cloud for example um uh, new relic um, has a, a fairly um generous pricing plan <laughs> Depends how much data you're you're using, but um, uh, they're they're quite a good uh, all-in-one platform. And then William is asking, um, so we have instruction for syncing it up with with Grafana, as mentioned. Mm. Um, and could they imagine to do the setup with Elasticsearch? Are you Matthew familiar? I'm not uh, familiar with Elasticsearch at all. I'm afraid. Um, I would say that any uh, any provider that can um, use open telemetry, it can be set up to work with that. Um, we've tested with New Relic, Grafana, Jaeger, Datadog, Prometheus, and I, I think Dynatrace as well. Um, so we know that they work uh, in some fashion with those. Um, as you've seen with Grafana, it works fairly well with that. And we have a question still from uh, Simon asking, uh, does the SSO kit work with collaboration engine and slash or uh, specific push requests? I don't know the answer to that. Yes, I think it will be something we'll have to try and find out. And then we have a question from Marcus asking, I just implemented SSO following the webinar, securing Varden apps with Spring Security and Keycloak um, best practices uh, from last year. Does the SSO kit provide any features that are not covered by this guide? I'm not exactly familiar with that article. Um, I, I do know that it it works on top of it can work on top of spring security so it could be migrated from whatever you've you've worked with and there's obviously the uh, the benefit of the sso kit installing as a, as a dependency directly to the platform as well um, i'll jump back to the collaboration engine question we got mm -hmm. an ask from the from the product owner saying um, you get Spring Security configured to work with Varian for SSO. You get an injectable authentication context to get the user form and performing logout. You get support for back channel logout, which Spring does not provide yet. I think okay. that was uh, an answer to Marcus. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Thanks, Luis. Um, Kishor is asking, does observability kit have any version limitation? So yes, it's also for Varian 23 and above. I think we can wait a few more minutes if you have if you have questions. Uh, there was actually a question we, we missed earlier on from Peter. Oh, my bad. Um, it's okay. Um, general question about SSO. What do people do as a fallback? For example, if your SSO provider goes offline, like Meta did the other day. Um, yeah, I'm not actually sure on the answer to that question. If uh, anybody has an answer to that. 
Uh, it probably depends on depends on the provider. Yeah. Um, it is possible to implement your own login um, that would be able to cope with that, I guess. So it doesn't have to uh, directly redirect to um, the authentication providers uh, page like I showed in my demo. You could uh, implement your own login page um, and then um, log in which, with whichever method you uh, use that way. And uh, yes, you can also use uh, several several providers at the at the same time as a fallback if you if you if you're so inclined. Uh, we have a question from Dinesh Kumar asking: When we enable server push, is there any impact with the SSO integration? Again, I'm not sure. But to test and find out, probably. <laughs> If you do, let us know. Yes, please. Let's wait one more, one more minute here for more questions. And thank you for, for all of these questions. And again, thank you for participating. We love to do these webinars. And if you keep signing up, we can, we can keep doing them. Okay, I think I think we're running out of time. So, thank you again very much for participating. And if you come up with any questions, just go to one.com/contact and just send us your questions afterwards. We'll be here to here to answer. I'll let Matthew know if any of those questions are regarding the SSO kit or observability kit. So, uh, thanks very much, and uh, thanks Matthew for joining. And I hope to see you all next time. All right, cheers. Yeah, goodbye. Bye now.